basketball, Jessica. Oh, just a little bit, CJ. I'm drunk on basketball. Yeah, I'm. I'm hungover on basketball is actually I, the right terminology. Listen, I got I got one game in me tonight. I got UConn, Syracuse. Wait, oh, is it UConn, Syracuse? On. Yeah, yeah but got then that. it's Iowa, West Virginia, and then what is it's West USC, Virginia Kansas. Still? West Virginia metrically, I was actually reading about this yeah. this morning. Um, they have the biggest potential at upsetting Iowa. They lead the country in steals. They get one steal every 16 and a half opponent possessions, which historical data, according to my athletic newsletter this morning, shows to be something you, quote, cannot ignore. Just saying. It's the only thing standing in the way of a Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Sweet 16, all-time officiating showdown. I thought MTSU was going to be the one to ruin that. We'll talk about it. I was really sad. That was my sleeper pick. I felt so smart. I was like, oh, my big basketball brain has once again shot me into a great position. And then the third quarter came. Womp womp. What was the song? Super Bloom by Mr. Wives. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. I pressed play. I said, ooh, Is that one this going to be a good day. EDMers? No. Okay. It's more just like a... You're doing your poppy, shoulder thing. Poppy feel good can't, music. I know. Can't people see can't the see the shoulder roll. Real flower girly. Super blue. Or flower super crowny. Blue. Yeah, they'd play great on the river. I'd love to see I, them I at, at River would. Beat. You've got a flower little crowny shirt on today. It is. It's a little puffy sleeves. Yeah, yeah. Flowy sleeves. Like linen type thing going on. Put a little yeah. flower crown on yes. you. You'll be at your festival chick now. I'm festival ready. You're festival ready. I have to get through tournament season first. Get through what? Tournament season. Oh, That's where we're at now. And Just then that festival fast, I season. <laughs> I don't know if you know so this, but we still have basketball. more basketball. What's up, everybody? It is Monday, March 25th. It's going to be a good day. Jessica Benson with you from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. CJ Hurt behind the glass coming up on today's show. Watched what felt like a hundred basketball games over the weekend. We might have gotten the best one of all in person last night in Memphis, Tennessee with Houston's win over Texas A&M. A one seed avoids fall Falling down all the one seeds advanced, all the two seeds advanced. We will get through the best and the worst from both the men's and women's tournaments over the weekend. Sweet 16 set on the men's side. We've got one more day of second round action for the women. The Memphis Grizzlies had a game over the weekend. Jaron Jackson Jr. had a game winner, but the big news for the Grizz, a big injury report update going into tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets. We'll get into that. And then we'll do some hot mess express. Included in that, one coach in college basketball brings a portable laundry machine with him so that he can rewash his underwear. Another child ate an incredible amount of cotton candy at FedEx Forum. We have all kinds of messy things to get to. We have a very busy show. Let's have some fun. Let's go. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore also featuring Drake Milligan VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office Cody Johnson he's looking for the hot hand Jared got the step got the fly there's no labs on that one electric rowdy intense they bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building if they were mad about something they're bringing it in if they were happy about something they're bringing it in so we need all that energy times a thousand we know there's only one team you want to watch and valley sports is the place to get your grizzlies experience the comebacks the buzzer beaters the can't miss memphis made moments live valley sports keeps the grind going before and after the game too with pete brevin fish and chris on grizzlies live watch grizzlies basketball all season long with valley sports and streaming on the valley sports app valley sports home of the only team you want to watch Justin Timberlake. I'm sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. I can't stop the Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. Don't walk away. 
The brand new single Selfish is available to stream and download now. So if I get jealous, I can't help it. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic. You know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Um, if he the head of you, kiss me is something you'll never do. I turn around and I level you. No motivation is needed. Look, I put myself on the pedestal. This is incredible. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt. Live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Good morning, good Monday, good March Madness to everybody. We have so much basketball to get through. I've decided that we simply sleep in April. That's the way things work this season. These games are ending so late. CJ, when you were a young child back in the day, take me back, do you remember the games going this late? Like encroaching midnight every single night late? I think so. I don't think and, but they it's, did. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Last night, Sunday, and this is my complaint about a lot of events. Yes. Sunday, we had one game at 11.15 noonish. Right. And then we had six games post 4 o'clock. Yes. Like, come on, man. Come on, do a better job with that. Back load or yes. front load. Yes. And then just have one it, at night. I love Jesus as much as the next person. Well, of course. At one point in time, we were a, a church-going society. Mm, what has happened? We have moved away from that. You can pit these games on during church time. And people are still going to tune in to, to watch because we're not all in, in church at that time. Also, church services now, from what I can tell, the ones I've been to, they're a tight hour, maybe hour 15, hour and a half. Got to keep so it I tight. Think, I think gone are the days where you're spending all day in church. I think, I think it depends on I the church. I, I don't want to speak. Mistaken. Not all churches. Not all Some churches. Some still go. I do go to the church of March Madness each and every March, and I have been staunchly set there since we left this show on Friday. I feel like all I have done is consumed basketball, which is a great place to be. Got home last night from the incredible Houston overtime win, which is so funny because I texted you and other Jacob at like 948 joking that I was going to cancel this morning's show because the Houston Texas A&M game was going to go until after 11 o'clock. It was a joke. There were like seven minutes left in the game at 9.48. So I was being what they call hyperbolic, or so I thought. I walked out of FedEx Forum at 10.58 on the dot, walked my little booty home, wasn't home until after 11. And then I get home, and what is on my television? Oh, it's Stanford, Iowa State on the women's side. That has also gone into overtime, which was a phenomenal game. And Cameron Brink, standout senior at Stanford, is on the bench. She fouled out. She told maybe, reportedly, allegedly, if you read lips in that kind of way, an official to uh, F you on her way to the bench. And I had to see, I had to see if Stanford and the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history were going to go down to this Iowa State team and this incredible player Audi who was also on the bench after she had 40 points in rum anyway next thing I knew it was 11:30, and then 11:30 is pushing midnight so we are running on fumes this morning 
But I will say it was a wonderful conclusion to the first and second round games here in Memphis with the Houston overtime win over Texas A&M, 100 to 95. We got a pure, real buzzer beater right in front of our eyes. It was a game tying buzzer beater. Buzz Williams was asked about it. Texas A&M coach He's like, well, I wish it had been for the win. It was for the tie. The way that that ball dribbled out to Garcia, it was almost like a roll to the top of the key. He had only made nine threes all season, and he makes that one, and he forces it into overtime, and FedEx Forum rejoiced because it was a moment that we all deserved after sitting through four of the worst tournament games on Friday. Both defenders went to Wade, Wade the fourth, right? Yes. They, they saw him come in. They're like, oh, get to that guy as well they should. You're telling me uh, – you, who would you in that situation? Who would you rather take the shot? Oh yeah, as they're in the time, I'm like, this is going to Wade. But at the same time, Wade had been horrible. Does not last matter. night. One of the worst tournament performances of the weekend. They did a really horrible. good job being physical with him uh, on the perimeter, and they got away with a whole lot. We were talking before the show about the foul situation there. The refs could have called 20, 25 more fouls with just how physical everyone was being with one another on the perimeter, and especially when you went inside. That's the way, for, for me, aesthetically speaking, I love that basketball. Just go, if, you, if you've got the courage to get in the paint, all right, be strong, go up strong. Otherwise, yeah. we're not bailing you out with, with foul calls. If you get hit in the chest, tough. Get hit in the shoulder, oh, well, if you get hit in the arms, okay, we'll call it because that affects the release. But none of that other stuff matters. If you're going in there, if you got the courage to get in there, good luck finishing Wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. I love that type of basketball. <laughs> and they were playing that with Wade, making it really uncomfortable for him. Also, it so felt like So uncomfortable that legs. he's pulling up from logo threes down four with 30 seconds left. He, he lost his legs. Also, he did it early, he, too. He, he's pulling up with, in that situation, the game is over. They need a quick bucket. And Wade is like, okay, business decision. I can take this three uncontested from here, or I can get closer and get hammered. Nah, dog, I'm going to take this three right here. It was such a physical game. The woman in front of us, we had some very enthusiastic Houston fans, older Houston fans. And at one point, the woman just yells, this is a basketball game, not a football game. And then as Texas A&M was going to the free throw for one of their 45 free throws that they took. Listen, Texas A&M missed 16 free throws last night. If Texas A&M had simply made their free throws, hey, remember, they're free. They would have beaten Houston. Like, they just had to make their free throws. They missed so many of them. But her husband, the this is basketball, not football quoters, husband goes, this is the screw job of a century. And when Jamal Shedd got that fifth foul and was the fourth Houston player to foul out in that overtime period, I thought they were going to lose their collective minds. But they had nothing to worry about because enter Ryan Elvin. Where were you when Ryan Elvin checked into a real-life second-round NCAA tournament game? Luckily, I got to see Ryan Elvin with my own eyes, and I think everybody just kind of goes, and I think Ryan Elvin probably said, me? Who, moi? And he goes and eventually has to take two free throws, and he misses the first, and then clanks off the back of the iron, and you're just like, oh. And if you watch Jamal Shedd in that moment, like full collapse on the bench, this is it. And then he made the second, and that is what this tournament – is for. And when Calvin Sampson talked about this man right here, Ryan Elvin, cooking up a big pot of, I believe, chili. Somebody said it could be boiled peanuts. I am not a boiled peanuts connoisseur. So when I saw is that this, not gumbo? I thought it was just chili. No, why would it be chili? We're not, we're not making chili in Houston. Why not? Because it's hot. Yeah, you can have chili in all weather. You can, but that's not a Houston staple. Okay, so we think it's gumbo? It's, uh, it's, it's gumbo. I'm pretty, or, or crawfish boil or something like that. Some, okay, some, some of kind of boil. A boil, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Houston are is right Are these the there gloves the that gulf. you wear during yes. a, I'm unfamiliar. Yes, the, like those are the gloves that you wear. That's what it's got to be because those are the gloves you wear for a boil. Well, he's got the sunbeam hat. Yeah. Where's he's my man from? Gloves. Is my man from Louisiana? Is no. he from the Gulf? I've got to give you all the that's details some, that's on some Ryan Gulf Elvin. Gulf Coast type stuff to me. <clears throat> Ryan Elvin is yes. from Round Rock, Texas. Yep. 6'1", yep. 170. That's, that's the goal. That's exactly why. He had played a yeah. grand total of 173 minutes in four years in Houston. He is a walk-on. And he comes in. And he makes a big free throw. He's studying business in graduate school. So that will be his future. Business, business, business. But for last night, he makes a free throw. And shout out to those 
gutsy Houston reserves because they got it done in overtime. Like, Texas A&M had all the momentum in the world. And with four of Houston starters all fouling out, we talked going into the tournament, while well, one of the knocks on Houston, if they're forced to go into their reserves, they don't really have go-to reserves. They don't have a ton of depth. They've had a lot of players, lost a lot of players to injury. And last night, a walk-on and some other guys really stepped up, along with Jamal Shedd, who was the best player on the court last night. I would say Sharp was the best player to me. Oh, the he way, just got hot. The, well, that's what hap- That's what the tournament is about. Sure. Who gets hot? But How Jamal many threes Shedd, did Sharp like, make? But he's Sharp, didn't not Sharp go for 30 through. points? I think he ended with 27. Okay, my apologies. I gave him three more points than what he well, should he have. Be I, I, I could be wrong. I could no, be wrong. Well, it, it he ended up with 30. God. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the best player it was for Houston. Yeah. Right? It's one of those two. But both of them combined carried that team to that point. And you, can, you can't lean on reserves for 18 minutes. You just can't do it. Not if you're Houston. Yeah. You can't lean on them for 22, 23 minutes. But for four? But for four, after we beat the hell out of these dudes, not not uh, from a score standpoint, but from a physicality standpoint, Texas A&M had nothing left. Texas yeah. A&M was done. They were limping through, trying to find a way to eke out something. And when Chef fouls out, Chef fouls out what? With he's at the two, very end, two, like a minute what, and a half, minute and a half left maybe. in overtime, yeah. double overtime, the second single overtime. single overtime. Excuse me. Yeah, like. You're fine. He did He did everything he could. Y'all just go out there for the last minute and a half and don't bleep it up, please. And they Can didn't. You do that? And they didn't. And they didn't. Make, all you got to do is make one. He made one. I That's all just, that matters. I was just really impressed with Shed. Like, I underestimated to a degree this Houston team. I had them getting upset. You know, you know it, it is what it is when it comes to the bracket side of it. But Jamal Shed is one of, if not the best point guards in the country. I say one of because we also saw a tremendous performance from Tyler Kolek at Marquette. Those two teams could end up meeting. Those two players could end up meeting in the Elite Eight if everything went as is. But Jamal Shedd and CJ and I were talking about before the show, there has got to be some place for him in the NBA. Because he, you just watch him play and you say, that dude belongs on a professional court. The reads that he made, the follow-up dunk, I know he's Listed at 6'1", he looks short. That is a knock on Jamal Shedd. But he and his ability to just command that offense and keep things humming. And as they are going through all of the foul trouble, he kept things consistent with Houston. And even as it's all crumbling and even as it goes into overtime, the importance of keeping Jamal Shedd on that court felt like the biggest thing for the Houston Cougars last night. And he will carry them the rest of the tournament. I found myself saying... We will likely or could likely be talking about Jamal Shedd, most outstanding player when this thing all wraps up in April. There have been a lot of great performances, but we talk about it every single March. Do you have a really, really good point guard? Cool. And you're a good team? You have a chance in this thing, and that was what we saw with Houston last night. And they're, they're good enough to where he doesn't have to carry them for the entirety of the game. You can yeah. get spurts where a sharp or a cry or somebody like that is having a a moment, right? 10, 15 minutes in a game or something like that. And that takes some of the burden off of him. The way that Houston penetrates and kicks is if you blink, you'll miss it. Shed gets in there and it's all, they always make the right read. It might not lead to an assist, but leads to a wide, to a pretty open guy who then has the choice. Hey, do I drive? Do I shoot? Do I make a one more pass and get a wide open shot? Like that offense yeah. that Houston runs is very, very good. And I should have known that physicality was going to be a thing in this game when both of those teams showed up to do layup drills and both coaches had the pads. My man, <laughs> Houston had the one arm pad just smacking the hell out of dudes coming through. Uh, Texas A&M had the big body pad just popping players as they were coming mm-hmm. through trying to finish above the rim. Physicality for both of those programs is something that they pride themselves on. I think Texas A&M is the highest rebound percentage team, off highest offensive rebounding percentage team in the nation, if I'm not mistaken, and it showed in that game yesterday in particular. If you brought up the fact of Texas A&M had to make free throws, they beat yeah. Houston. If Houston had a boxed out, which, good luck. I don't know how you're supposed to box yeah. these dudes out. 
But if Houston had a boxed out and ended possessions, it's not like Texas A&M was shooting a, a good percentage from the field. Oh. They root multiple times in that game. They had three plus shots at the rim and all of them missed. Right. It, it's just Houston wasn't able to secure the rebound. And that says something when you can be more physical than Houston in a basketball game. Yeah, it was just such a nice ending here in Memphis. And obviously that place erupted with the buzzer beater that sent it into overtime prior to Sunday. And I'll say prior to the second half of the second half with Baylor and Clemson. And I really thought we were going to witness a Clemsoning in real time. I don't ever think I've seen Clemsoning with my own eyeballs. And I still haven't because Clemson holds on to beat Baylor. But the energy started driving up towards the end of that game as Baylor was mounting their comeback. And they had been down, I think, as many as 13-16 and get back into a two-point game late. We had only had two real stretches of like significant energy in FedEx Forum in the first and second rounds. And the first was the first five minutes of the Nebraska Texas NAM game were wild. Like I felt like I was being baptized by corn. I was being baptized by the Big Ten as a future member, USC grad, going into the Big Ten. I was like, oh my God, is this what awaits me on the other side? It felt like a Nebraska home game. And then Texas AM takes control of that game and things died out. Like the energy died on the vine for both sides. Like we had wild Texas A&M fans behind us. We had wild Nebraska fans all around us. We we're like, someone's going to get in a fight by the end of this game. And it ended up the only like fight that happened was a Texas A&M fan asking, or a Big Ten fan asking, or I'm sorry, a Nebraska fan asking a Texas A&M fan, why do you all chant SEC all the time? So stupid. The, so stupid. The SEC, the Texas A&M guy goes, because we're all one conference. Like we support the goodness of the conference. And then Nebraska fan goes, yeah, we don't believe in that in the Big Ten. And I said, oh, I'm ready. This is my life's work coming this way. But it was that energy at the beginning of that. And then there was a brief, the briefest moment in time in the Houston Longwood game at the end of the four game slate on Friday where Longwood cut it to seven. And it was one of the most abysmal starts to a basketball game. Longwood, great name. Not a very good basketball team, but they cut it to seven. And I swear every single person in that arena who was not a diehard Houston fan had decided we're riding with Longwood. And everyone was just like, go, go. And then they were down 20 in the blink of an eye. So we needed that. We needed that game last night to save what happened at FedEx Forum this weekend. And we got it. Nebraska fans deserve good things. Do they? Yes. I pray they never get it. You guys don't know how hard I pray that Nebraska never gets relevant in anything again because good grief, they're annoying. But the energy that they had, incredible. Incredible. So much red. For, for a basketball team that's kind of middle of the pack in the big yes. Has they're never won an NCAA tournament, won game. NCAA tournament game. tournament game. They were raucous to start that game. They were the they fans were you saw everywhere downtown. Everywhere. They, the, the first, like, 10 minutes of that game, I'm not sure if they sat down at all. No. I don't want them to be good because 10 minutes of that, it's like, nope, I can't do this. I can't imagine. It's bad enough Tennessee has snuck into relevancy. Sure. It's bad enough that, like, Notre Dame remains relevant. Sure. Hopefully Alabama falls off because those fans are annoying as, mm. as well. Texas is being back is not a good thing for me and my psyche. No. Nebraska get good? Oh, y'all think Big Ten fans are insufferable yeah. now with Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State. And then you bring in the, the dudes and dudettes from the West Coast with USC and Oregon. Like, Nebraska get good at something? Oh, those freaking fans are going to be insufferable. So, no, they need okay. never be. You and your institution joining the Big Ten need to solemnly, solemnly vow to make sure that Nebraska does not get good at anything. And I want to thank the fine people in Minnesota and Wisconsin and Iowa for doing their damn job in the Big Ten West, mm -hmm. beating the hell out of Nebraska. It's as it was intended. But my God, if they did get good, oh they'd be one of the most outrageous fan groups in the country. And I did hate it for Memphis businesses that Nebraska lost because they far outnumbered any other fan base that we saw here this weekend. It was so nice to feel the energy downtown Memphis. Like, being a downtown resident, I love my city. I live downtown, I love living downtown. 
But there are weekends where it feels like a ghost town down here. And you're just walking around, you're bopping into restaurants. You can get in anywhere. Reservation, never heard of her. This weekend, there were so many people downtown, and it just felt so good. There was so much energy on Beale. There was so much energy on South Main. And to have all these fans come into the city, and it was a beautiful weekend. The sun came out. You and I were at this starry event down on Beale Street where Tony Allen and Rudy Gay and Mario Chalmers did a three-point competition against fans and just people who rolled up. But it was a like, complete blue sky day, and so many people were in this city having a good time. And it makes me so mad that the city and the university missed the memo for the next two opportunities they had to bring games here for the NCAA tournament. So we won't get them in 2027. We won't get them in 2028. I think the earliest you can get them is 2029 if Memphis is in that like voting rotation. But like, come on, like look what you're missing. To walk home last night and just floods of people were outside. It felt so good on a Sunday night. And it makes me very sad that we won't have it again for a minute. But hopefully we'll have the NBA playoffs back in Memphis. Uh, not this year, of course, but in coming years. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about how all of the number one and number two seeds have advanced to the Sweet 16. Some of the best games, the standout games from the weekend that were not in Memphis, Tennessee. And our chat question of the day, one of the hardest chat questions, what players March Madness run are you most sad to see end? Currently, Jack Golke with 43% of the vote. The accountant, get out of here. On the men's side. Yeah. We'll do the women's side tomorrow once these games finish and they're 16 to 7. Perfect. On the men's side, your other options are Casey Tominaga. I had to watch him cry in front of me at FedEx Forum. Made me shed a small tear. Uh, Jermaine Custinard. Awesome two-game stretch for Oregon, whose tournament run came to an end. And then Eddie Lampkin Jr. for Colorado. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about the upcoming matchups when we return on the other side. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Anticipate each challenge, make a quick response, capitalize on every opportunity, and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. 
Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. We continue going through this weekend's March Madness NCAA tournament action outside of the great game in Memphis last night. Houston beating Texas A&M in overtime. Did want to say I apologize if anybody followed my lead and took Nebraska to win two games here. Uh, Kese Tominaga. Drunk, Thank you drunk for your off, service. Drunk off one play. Thank you for but your service. But that's what service. we do. That's what we, we do. We, we talk ourselves on the, into the Japanese Steph Curry. Latch on to one thing. <laughs> Just one. one dude. They call him Japanese Steph Curry. I said, sign allegedly, me up. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, he stepped off a plane in street calls after flying from Japan to Lincoln, he Nebraska, did the and hit backwards. twenty shots. Yep, give me him. He hit the backwards yeah. half court shot. Yep, yeah. give me that dude. They did a good job locking well, his and ass he, up. He made his first three threes, and yeah. I was like. And then I was like, oh. And yeah. then he was crying. Him and uh, Boo Booey for Northwestern had a really emotional end after their loss yesterday. And I was like, God, bless it. Uh, also, New Mexico just flamed out. Have to mention, Richard Patino coached New Mexico. What Clemson did to other teams' shooting percentages, like Baylor, Really good offense this season, right? Mm -hmm. Their split yesterday, 38-25-61. from the field, 25% from 30, 61% from the free throw line. New Mexico was one of the worst box scores I have ever seen. 29% from the field, 13% from three, 65% from the free throw line. It was an ugly, gross game. But for Clemson to beat Baylor, the ACC gets all their revenge with four teams getting into the Sweet 16. I was told the ACC was done for, was cooked, but now four ACC teams make it to next weekend. UNC, Clemson, Duke, NC State. NC State, the only double-digit seed who will be in the Sweet 16 next week. We still get more. DJ Burns! as we continue on with the tournament. But yeah, all the two, top two seeds advanced to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2019, just the fourth time that that's happened since the tournament expanded. And usually, or one would think, that that bodes well for some pretty awesome matchups in the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Like when I was looking at the 2019 bracket, and it's also interesting to remember that that was uh, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s Michigan State team in 2019 that lost to no, they made it to the Final Four. Was that Jaron's team? Was that not No, it was Tillman's? not Jaron's okay, team. Okay, because they didn't play Jaron down the stretch it of games. It was not Jaron's team. But yeah. they lost to uh, Texas Tech mm -hmm. in the Final Four. Uh, oh, but that, that was the Culver year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I thought that man was going to be great in the NBA. My gosh. That Is was the. Uh, I don't think so. Is he G League? Is I'm going to look that up. You finish your thought. Well, PJ look. Washington and Tyler Hero were on that Kentucky team that lost to Auburn in the Elite Eight. But the uh, the Auburn-Kentucky Elite game was awesome. The Kentucky-Houston Sweet 16 game, uh, Kentucky won 62-58. You look at the scores and they were all tight. That was the Purdue, like, super high-scoring uh, Tennessee game where Purdue won 99-94. to Carson Edwards was for Purdue that year. Um, Virginia made it to the Final Four, beating Purdue. That was the Ty Jerome, Kyle, Kyle Guy on Virginia. Anyway, even though we didn't get a ton of upsets in the second round, that can play well going into next weekend. But it did feel as we had some pretty big upsets, or at least seeding upsets, in the first rounds, and then everything felt pretty chalky come Saturday, Sunday. That didn't mean there weren't great games. There were some really, really good games. Did you have an all-time favorite not here in Memphis game that you watched this weekend? Um, I, I guess the Oregon uh, Creighton Marquette game. game or C Creighton. I'm getting my Big East. Yeah, they're Big East team. Oregon Creighton was was a good one um, to to watch. And I I found myself being really really annoyed several times with the state of college basketball. Yes, I don't. Too. And this is basketball in general. This complaint, but the lack of physicality that we allow in basketball bothers me. The stoppages, dear sweet Lord, we've got to figure something like out about that. Why would I? I'd never take my star dudes out of the game. Because you get enough breaks. You, you get enough breaks. Yeah. 
I'd never take them out. Um, but the the third thing, I, I hate, I hate when teams decide, you know what, six minutes left, we're going to abandon everything we've Play done that. to get here, and we're just going to hold the basketball and try and run out the shot clock and take really tough shots. That's and what that's, Clemson did. That's, that's what Clemson did and almost bit them in the ass. I think that's some of what Houston did, and they got them as well. It got Oregon. Now, my, my question with Oregon is, did Kuznard have enough gas? Because Kuznard and what's the other one? Dante? Uh, and Fale Dante. They were the only two who scored in that second Kusinard, half. Kuznard. That was it. It was one of them who scored. in that game, yeah. Chris Luther was screaming at Kuznard to hurry it up. He was casually strolling the ball up the court because he was so tired. Kuznard and Dante had... I think 60 of Oregon's 73 points in the game. They had all of their points after half. And so by the time you got to the second overtime, like, they were cooked. They were fully gassed. They had nothing left in the tank. But what was awesome about Kusinard was in that first overtime period, as he's struggling, it looks like he can barely breathe. He has his hands on his knees before he even gets the inbound to take the ball up the court. And then he comes and he hits that huge three to tie it up at the end of the first overtime period. And you're like, ah, he's still got it. But he was out. It was just. That's, that that three-point shot, it went in. That's similar to the one that Wade the fourth took, where it is, I have nothing left sure. to give. This one is, goes in, one doesn't. We have different is, conversations. This is it for me. This is, I'm on my deathbed. This is the last <laughs> the bit last of fight team. I have left in me. And he made that shot. I was like, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Somebody else do something. So they had how many points? 60. 60, they're 73. The other dude had seven, and he wasn't able to come back into the game. <laughs> Yeah. So that's 67 points right there from three dudes, one of which can't play 71 points. So everybody else could only score four. I, I, four. But I, I thought that was a valiant effort that Oregon put up, yeah. specifically Cousinard. I, um, I, anytime somebody beats Michigan State, even if it is North Carolina, I enjoy that. So when North Carolina put the squeeze on Michigan State about 15, 16 minutes Felt in good. that second half, Oh, that, that warm, this cold, dead heart of mine. I'm trying to think of somebody else who Jalen and I did this before the show, yeah. and now I'm just blanking on all the teams that I said. But that those those are two that stand out to me. I really enjoyed, and I know you're conveniently leaving it out because you have the Colorado Buffalo as your Final Four team. Oh, Colorado, the Colorado was Marquette, good. The Colorado Marquette that was game a good one. was tremendous. An unexpected fight in our household because – my bracket was doing pretty good. 99 percentile for the bracket. I know nobody wants to hear about anyone's bracket. My husband especially does not want to hear about my bracket. Right now? now it's down to 98. Because oh, I didn't have Houston. Shit now. So Don't sorry. Me. So sorry. Uh, but all weekend, I was like, well, my whole bracket rests on Marquette, right? And so I have a couple brackets for some dollars out there. And Chris, his bracket falls off the planet earth which is what happens to everyone which is a totally normal universal march experience i've never had a bracket this good this late just consistently like you still have final four teams here and there and elite eight teams i have every elite eight team nice. no i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't have houston i don't have houston that's my one fail on the elite eight um but so i was wanting i just wanted chris to love me and my bracket. I just wanted him to root for Marquette. And he was like, no, I'm only rooting for underdogs. Why, why don't you want to have any fun? And I'm like, because my entire, our house is wrapped up in Marquette basketball, Chris. Just like, who was the, Reese Davis? Did you see that on ESPN this weekend? He was on one of the betting shows and someone was giving like betting advice on the UConn Northwestern game. And he essentially said like, well, that sounds as much of a sure-fired, like, a guaranteed bet if I've ever heard of one. There's no such thing. A guaranteed investment is what he called it. He had to come back and apologize. My guaranteed investment is on Marquette. And my own husband couldn't get excited about Tyler Kolick, who is averaging 11 assists in the tournament thus far. And this Marquette team that had Shaka Smart crying in his post-game interview because of the emotions all tied into it. Tyler Kolick was out of the Big East tournament. Now he's back. I really like this Marquette team. It made me a little nervous that Shaka Smart started getting so teary-eyed, bleary-eyed in that post-game because, like, it's not over. I, you just made it to the Sweet 16. I think that's just what he is. I think he was sweet, sweet relief. To make it to we, the Sweet 16 because been he, on him. he has not been there since he took VCU to the Final Four in 2011. He's been nine and, and tournament had, appearances since and hasn't made it to the second had weekend. Good, had good jobs. Good teams and good jobs. Texas, Marquette. Right. Yeah. So I think there was a 
level of like personal achievement and personal relief. And now I need them to regroup and get ready for the rest of their tournament. But that game was really solid. Also with the Creighton, Oregon game, that was the back-to-back in the Pittsburgh uh, regional where their other game that night was NC State, Oakland. That was so another overtime game and NC State and RJ Burns makes his way through. RJ Burns is Zach Randolph. He is Zebo 2.0. His play, his attitude, the little like sideshows where he's shushing the crowd as they're coming down on him early in the game, the like are you not entertained energy from RJ Burns. He has become one of my I'm sorry, DJ Burns. DJ Burns, not RJ Burns. Uh, he has become one of my favorite players to watch this tournament. I am a little sad that we don't get the DJ Burns um, Colorado dude matchup in the next round because that would have been an all-timer with Eddie Lampkin Jr. and DJ Burns, just big, beefy men going at each other in an NCAA tournament game. But Colorado came up short, obviously, to Marquette. Uh, but the juxtaposition in that game of DJ Burns and Jack Golke, and DJ Burns is just like the inevitable force, 20-point double-double, and Jack Golke is just this machine from three. He ended up with 16 threes in two games. Like, we didn't know who this dude was a week ago, and next thing we know, he's doing TurboTax commercials from his hotel lobby, filmed on his phone, and he's in the crowd after Oakland lost that game, and he's just, like, living it up. One last ride, one last moment for future accountant, future orthodontist, whatever he wants to do with his life, he can go out and do it. Probably not going to be basketball, 24 years old. This is the end. Eventually that hair is going, the hairline is fading on not him every, fast. Not every hairline Eventually, goes away. He's already got the, the little V right oh, here. Sometimes you can just have the... Okay, eventually it's going to leave. He's going to be bald, and he's going to show up at a YMCA, and nobody's going to know who he is. And he's going to give those dudes Hell. buckets. You're going to be like, hell. wait, who the hell is this guy? I don't know, but he's got a shot. So shout out to him. Nice run. Um, the all of the It felt like all of the favorites won. I, Vegas, I saw on Twitter, Vegas took a big time hit. Because whenever you do the lines, most people bet yeah. on the favorites. And favorites in the round of 32, 15 and 1 straight up. Whew. And I think 13 and 3 against the spread, I think. So like it was, it was, here we go. 15 and 2 straight up, 14 and 3 against the spread for double digit favorites. Favorites were 30 and 22 in the first two rounds overall, best since 2008. Top four seeds, 26 and 4 straight up, 21 and 9 against the spread, best against the spread ever uh, by betting public, 51 plus percent of the tickets, 38 and 13 against the spread. Best in the past 15 years. First half overs were 31 and 21. Second best since 2010. Round of 32 favorites. 15 and 1 straight up. 11 and 5 against the spread. Third 15 and 1 straight up uh, or better all time. Round of 64 dogs did have 12 straight up wins, which was the most since 2001. Dang. So. Yeah, we saw some massive blowouts yesterday. Like Duke's win over James Madison. Didn't need to watch that. 93 to 55. Alabama ended up with a pretty solid win over Grand Canyon. It was bizarre because we were here watching the Clemson Baylor game during Alabama Grand Canyon. And it felt like every single time the crowd or the um, Jumbotron went to the Alabama Grand Canyon game, Alabama was either getting an offensive rebound and a putback, uh, Grand Canyon was doing. Just the most of nothing on offense. I just never saw a functioning offense from Grand Canyon. I saw all the tweets about the, like, shrieking fan from Grand Canyon. Their fan base was wild. I've learned way too much about Grand Canyon in the last weekend. I really did think they were just an online university. Shame on me. They are a don't call us a for-profit, maybe for-profit. I don't want to get in trouble talking about Grand Canyon, but it seems like they're a for-profit university. And the largest Christian university in the United States of America because of their online Wait, presence. they're a Christian university? They sure are. There's a lot of Christian money behind Grand Canyon. Okay. Yeah. Are they in the Grand Canyon? No, I would think they're they in Phoenix. Another... That's confusing. Yeah, I know. Okay. When I go to search, when I want to pay homage to a great NCAA tournament performance, and I go to the Grand Canyon, and I'm searching for Grand Canyon University, and all I find is nature, is Grand Canyon I'm going to be Phoenix? disappointed. 
not in Phoenix. Is Grand Canyon not in Arizona? Like, it, that's no. a pretty big canyon, isn't it? Does it not stretch I mean, it's quite large states? It's, Does it not hit it's Utah? It's far out of Phoenix. Arizona? But, I mean, yes, it's, it's mostly in Arizona. I think okay. Grand Canyon National Park is primarily, uh, it might entirely be okay. in but Utah. But they're, they're just not near but the Grand Canyon. But they're not there. They're not near it at all? No. Oh, wow. No. That's Would you like, like me to tell you how far away they are? Yes. That's almost okay, like Oakland not being in, in Oakland, Oakland, California, being, and being in, in Oakland, Rochester. Michigan. Well, being in Rochester. <laughs> but not New York. But not New York. <laughs> Rochester, Michigan. <laughs> like, what are we doing with the names of these places? Okay. Um, it's a three-hour and 13-minute drive from oh, Grand Canyon University to Grand Canyon University. You can't call yourself Grand Canyon, Canyon University Park. if you're not in. If you're three and a half hours away, no, you're not Grand Canyon University. No, I need them to create a Glacier National Park University where it is in Glacier National Park. Like, I want the university. Well, actually, don't build on our national parks, okay, please. So Preserve them to the best go. of our abilities. We don't. We don't nearly fund them enough. They're the most beautiful thing that we have in this United States of America. So no universities, no for-profit universities can be built. But I'll give an online university the opportunity to take a Glacier National Park. You could make it your screensaver, right? It's the same thing. I guess, if your sure. screensaver is Glacier National Park and you attend Glacier National Park University, I feel like it all. Then fits you graduated together. from. A national park. I think so. I think <laughs> can't be call you park it. ranger. <laughs> That's where you're at. <laughs> what more could you Wait, ask Wait, who's for? a park ranger in Yogi now? Isn't it just a park ranger? I, he has a name, Jessica. It's not <laughs> Ranger John, is it? <laughs> famous, ranger Dave? I just looked up famous park rangers and that did not. Is it Ranger Rick? No. Ranger Rob? No. Who's Ranger Rick, though? Ranger who's Rick Shelton is Shelton Johnson? He's a park ranger who has his own Wikipedia page. Oh, turn up. Nice job. He's the U.S. He works in Yosemite. Oh, okay. Yosemite University would be pretty great. Oh, that would be fun. As well. Anyway, a lot of other uh, blowouts. The San Diego State-Yale game. Sorry to Yale. Tough end to their March Madness opportunities. UConn destroyed Northwestern 75-58. Purdue destroyed Utah State 106-97. Uh, 106-67. Reading numbers is hard. Zach Eady. Woo! John Smith, Ranger John. John Smith? Is that the guy from Pocahontas? Yes. Well, and it's also the guy from <laughs> Mr. and Miss Smith. They just throw generic mm. names on there for these people. John Smith is the most yes. generic named man yes. in America. Zach Eady is not just tall. I did want to make sure that as a basketball show, we make sure that Matt Painter, it, head coach at Purdue, knows that I, Jessica Jane Benson, am not out here just saying, Zach Eady is just tall. It sure as hell. Sure as hell helps that he's tall. It's an attribute that contributes he's, to him being an effective basketball player. Sure. He's tall, and that helps. It does. It, and when Utah State looks like the little team just trying to... Look like ants on him. him. It really did. I always think of, what's the the book? Is it Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travel, where the big giant man is on the ground and all the little people are little trying to... People. Yeah, yes. that's what it looked like with yes. Utah State defending Zag. Edie in the paint last night. What are you still you're going to do? If you can take that to your advantage, absolutely. You're going to go at it. You're going to stay in the paint all night, and you're going to get to the free throw line. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Why would you do anything? Why like, would you do anything that's else? That's like saying, It's so shed, easy. Don't shed, make your life all, more difficult. All shed is is really, really quick and really, really fast. You take that away from him, what do you have? Well, yeah, no shit. Yeah, then like, he's that, not a that's, basketball that's, player. <laughs> that's what we're <laughs> doing. We're not talking about him as a future professional. I don't know why we do this with height in basketball. Yeah. Right? We don't attack anybody else's... Like, he just jumps really, really high. I've heard that complaint. That was a complaint that they would make about Blake Griffin mm. around these parts. He just jumps really, really high. There's nothing else to Well, it. if he well, didn't jump high, maybe we would not be talking about him. Uh, Giannis <laughs> has no skill. There's no bag for Giannis. He's just freakishly athletic. In a league full of freak athletes, I, I think that's pretty damn impressive. Yeah. Like, why would I want to take that away? I also think he's pretty freaky, you know? So where you get? Uh, we know he's pretty free. We know. We, we know. know he's claimed it. That region, though, with Purdue is pretty fun uh, in that it's all of those teams that make your tummy feel a little tight during March Madness. They all made it through. The no-no teams they, The no-no well. teams fell, came their way into the second weekend. And now Purdue will play Gonzaga, who easily beat Kansas, 89-68. to The second half for Gonzaga just whoosh, took off nine straight Sweet 16s for the Zags. And then in that region also is Tennessee. Rick Barnes makes it to the second weekend, makes it out of the Rick Barnes Bowl in their game against Texas, even though it was one of the worst shooting performances 
to get a win. Not one of the worst. The worst shooting performance in NCAA tournament history that resulted in a win. Teams that shot as poorly as Tennessee did on Saturday were 0-66. And now they're one in 66 because Tennessee managed to win. Dalton Connect made big free throws down the stretch, even though we had an abysmal game outside of that. They got the win. They got the win. They That's the all win. that matters. That's all that matters. And now if you're a Tennessee fan or a Tennessee naysayer like myself, like this is one of those things where, okay, this is the game they were supposed to lose. Surely they won't be this bad again. Could this be a Final Four type run for Tennessee? I'm like, not saying it. I'm I'm just if I'm not you ready win to say that it. game. I if I could do it right now, redo it, do it like a sweet 16 pick, mm -hmm. I think I would put Tennessee in the final four. <gasps> I think I would. <gasps> well. I mean, all the other no-no teams are there as well. Arizona. Purdue is there. Arizona is there. And they're impressively also. Like yeah. not limp Tennessee might have kind of limped no, into it. No, they destroyed. Uh, but the other ones handled, uh -huh. throttled their competition. Arizona beat Dayton 78-68. Illinois beat Duquesne, the end of Duquesne's run, 89-63. Oh, no. Big oh, Duquesne no. fans. Coach Dan Brott will never again be able to say, that guy coached LeBron James in high school. Thank God. Until he comes back, finds a new school. I thought he was retiring. He is. Okay, good. But what if he, you know. Go coach middle school basketball. They need you down there. They sure do. They sure do. Anyway, that was the men's action. We're going to take a quick break. It's a Grizzlies game day. Grizzlies had a game against the Spurs, got a win against the Spurs over the weekend. But we also have to talk about a couple of the biggest games on the women's side. There is a reported, alleged, big capital J journalist piece coming out against LSU head coach Kim Mulkey. And it looked like LSU might just lose to Middle Tennessee State yesterday. The refs. Helped him out a bit along the way. We'll talk about the best games from the women's side of things, plus Grizzlies Nuggets tonight when we come back. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. This is an actual good shoe. Yeah, it looks like, like this is a shoe. real good shoe. What yeah. you think about them, uh, KJ? She <laughs> likes Cheetos. Like Cheetos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Cheetos? You like Cheetos? Kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's what I mean. For kids, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And honestly, if I was still playing basketball, I like I played in brightly colored shoes. I, I wore pink shoes a lot of the yeah. time or purple shoes. Like, I like that. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Sauced by Will Smith is taking their championship taste to FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Did you do anything in that St. Joe's game? No, I was strictly playing defense. Delonte West was tough. That's a pro. Oh, my God. That step back. In that oh, wait, hold on. 40 minutes. You didn't even get a rest. No, I you played, played the whole 40. game. Six for 11 from the field. That was me. 12 points, six rebounds, five assists. Oh, I was nice that game. <laughs> I thought I ain't getting double figures. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Sauced by Will Smith is taking their championship taste to FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. 
Hey, Grizzlies fans, turn your stadium excitement into betting action at Southland Casino Hotel. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, Southland brings you more gaming action than ever before. Step onto our massive casino floor stretching more than two and a half football fields. Slot enthusiasts can enjoy more than 2,300 machines from penny slots to high limits and play the hottest games like Aristocrat, Dollar Storm, Cloverlink, and Lightning Cash. Table game aficionados can feel the thrill of the felt with 50 live table games. From three card to black Blackjack match, we're ready to deal you in. Plus, don't miss Stadium Gaming for an interactive digital experience. And for high rollers, our high limit room is calling your name. Go big on six high limit blackjack tables or spin one of our 54 high stakes slot machines. Throw in eight delicious dining options and a 300 room high rise hotel, and there's plenty to keep you going. At Southland Casino Hotel, the gaming excitement never stops. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800 522 4700. Welcome back. Welcome back. CJ, all weekend I have felt like Anthony Edwards because I have been screaming at the Washington Post to drop the article. Send the article. Press submit on the article. An article that I did not care about whatsoever because I did not know of its existence until Pat Forty had a tweet on Friday saying, hearing some buzz about a big Washington Post story in the works on LSU women's hoops coach Kim Mulkey potentially next week. Wagons being circled, etc. Unsure what the et cetera is. Honestly, I saw the tweet and I thought to myself, well, gee, this isn't any big surprise. We have heard many rumors and stories about Kim Mulkey, primarily about her relationship or non-relationship with Brittany Griner, best player who ever played for Kim Mulkey, Kim Mulkey's absence in the entire ordeal when Brittany Griner was stuck over in Russia, uh, reports of an old ESPN article where Kim Mulkey, um, according to that report, urged Brittany Griner to hide her sexuality in college. Anyway, from there, Kim Mulkey has become one of the biggest villains in sports, a role that she seems to proudly wear, just like she proudly wears a lot of sequins and animal patterns and whatever else she wants to put on at any given time. And so I was like, okay, this article will come out and I'm not gonna subscribe to the Washington Post for it because my free subscription or my yearly subscription ran out and I just don't have the funds for it, but someone will aggregate it and I'll find out what it is. But then Kim Mulkey in her opening press conference, her opening statement from her press conference addressed the news that this article is coming out um, she said that it has been an article that has been being worked on for over two years. Then she complained that they only gave her 48 hours to answer to this article, but it's contradicted in the fact that she said they've been working on it for two years and trying to get her to comment or sit down for an interview on this article. She said that she has hired the best defamation law firm in the country and will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about her. So this is hanging over LSU during the tournament. Meanwhile, I'm watching this Middle Tennessee team upset Louisville in the first round, and I'm thinking to myself, mm, gee, I really like MTSU's chances at pulling a big upset over LSU. I already like it without a bit of a distraction perhaps affecting the LSU locker room and the first half of that game felt really smart because MTSU looked like they just might pull off the upset and then the third quarter starts and it was one of the most egregiously called games I have ever watched. I cannot remember which men's game was going on at the time. It was one of the blowouts so I failed to have any reason to jump back and forth and just straight up watch through the entirety of the second half between LSU and MTSU. The final free throw count and sometimes putting focus on disparity in free throws does not tell the story of the game. In this case it did. 37 to 9. 37 to 9. And when MTSU's big girl fouled out Fairly early in the third quarter, that entire game changed because they didn't have anyone that they could throw at the size of LSU. And Angel Reese is waving bye-bye to her on her way off. She's, she's in tears. She's crying. She's having a full meltdown on her way off the court, which is fine. It's emotional. It's the tournament. I love the emotions of it. And also, I love Angel Reese doing the bye-bye because, again, that's just who Angel Reese is. Like, I... Some people are like, oh, so disrespectful. No, give me more of that. Give me the bye-byes. Give me Cameron Brink telling the official to F you. That's fun. That makes the sport more fun. Women don't have to have any extra decorum that men have in the sport. So that part's all fine. But the free throw discrepancy 
was atrocious. The foul calls were atrocious. It felt like LSU got a call every 30 seconds. I truly watched that game feeling as if the crowd and the LSU coaches shaded the officiating to a degree. Not purposefully. I don't think it's not like the officials go in there and say LSU has to win this game. But obviously it's an LSU home game. And sometimes, like, momentum and energy can just feel like it's like a monumental push in one direction. And that's how it felt. And it made me sad to watch MTSU go out that way after such a competitive first half. But all their girls got in foul trouble. All their women got in foul trouble. And LSU advances. And we potentially will get LSU-Iowa, which might break the college basketball space. I was going to say women's college basketball space, just college basketball space, period. I need it. I like, want directly. It. I, I, I need it. So very much, so very badly, um, because I don't like LSU. I don't like Angel Reese. I don't like uh, what's what's the the chick who's uh, promoting her Johnson? rap single. Flo J. Johnson. I don't like Johnson. I don't like him. She had a hell of a game. I don't like any. Haley of Van Leith, who got benched. Oh, I can't stand benched. Haley Van Leith. Oh. And I don't find myself on the side of the the Caitlin Clarks in these rivalries often. But, like, I'm on that side now. It is, you know, when Superman and Batman square off, everybody picks a side. Right? Yes. Neither one is bad, but you, you pick your side. I'm, I'm always on the darker side. I'm always on the grittier side, the rougher side, the mm. side that's willing to do whatever need be done to get the job done. That's where I am. And so if we're comparing these two to Superman Batman, I mean, LSU will be the, the Dark Knight and uh, I will be Superman. I never go over to that side. I'm on that side for this. I need Caitlin Clark to go out there and pummel those chicks, to just pit up all of the points on them. I need that like a fish needs water, like a bird needs air. I need it. I give it to me. Oh, it would be so good. Also, on the monkey stuff, like, is it going to be anything we don't know? I don't know, like, but now know. I feel like it's the it's the Streisand effect. I care about it. We know things about her. We know sure. what she is. We know that Could she... Could be worse? I, if it's worse, give it to me. Right. Give it to me if it's worse. But if all you've got are stories from players about her being homophobic or racist or... or we know that. Like, we, we know that. We know who that's, she is. That's not going to matter at all to, to me. And it's not going to matter at all to the young woman who can... T- Young women who will continue to play for a coach who's got a pretty good track record of, like, WNBA superstars, right? Didn't, I think, Witherspoon play for her, Brittany Griner, uh, and others have all come from Kim Mulkey. She walks into your room, you're like, yo, this is a deal I got to make. I'm making that deal. That's just kind of is what it is. So unless it's something new, I don't need to know about it. I was trying to – I can't find it, but there was a video of – a bunch of the players talking about Kim Mulkey because the players were asked about it. And I've actually thought Haley Van Lith's answer was the most telling where she wasn't necessarily endorsing coach Mulkey. It was more like a, she is what she is. We understand she gets results. She wins a lot. It is what it is. It's going to put you in, in these positions where you have an opportunity to win big games. But it was what she didn't say through what she was saying that it makes it not like you, you get it. But they do win games, and I do hope that we get to see LSU, Iowa. Did you watch Caitlin Clark's dad situation at all over the weekend? Oh, yeah. She, he Great told her, sports sh- dad. Shut the hell up. Shut the F up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. It you, was who, so who do good. You, I don't want to do this. So Am good. I going to do it? I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it. Who the hell do you think? You think you're Angel Reese? You think you're one of those? No. Stop it. No. And by Angel Reese and one of those, I mean a shit talker. A complainer. No, stop it. Quit it. Knock that shit off. Yeah. Shut the bleep up. And I I rock with that. A good daddy in right there. Yeah, I enjoyed I it. I enjoyed the face of him. Just like complete girls basketball dad energy. Like, shut up. Stop. Like, and then at one point he's like, take her out. <laughs> take her out. Take my kid out of the game. Because she's <laughs> lost it. Yeah. She's mentally. Huge. Mentally. She's, she's mentally not. out. That girl like. I don't want to say punched her in the face, but I mean, it looked like she punched her in the face. What, what did she get hit with? And where, where she did got she get hit, hit with her hand in the face? With the open hand or closed hand? It was like a claw. It might have been a claw. Okay, I don't so know. She I couldn't see. I could not see where the fingers rested, so I'm not going to call it a. But we know a she punch, got she got a, she got struck by a hand in a the strike. face. Strike. Yes. yes. Oh, all right. Sure. Yeah. 
Right, rightfully so. If you strike somebody in the face, that person's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just a game, dog. Uh, the other really good games from this weekend on the women's side, Duke upset Ohio State, which is a huge upset. Duke was down 16. Shout out to Carol Lawson and Duke for getting that one. I loved that here in Memphis when we were at the men's first and second round games, they would occasionally cut into – other games, both in the men's tournament and the women's tournament on the Jumbotron, which I thought was a really nice touch. I would say if anyone were asking me, how can you make regional sites better and first and second round sites better? I think they should do more of that. We could get some split screens. We could make sure that every time out, I don't really need to see the sock throwing. They had a sock toss every game. I don't need that. Just let me see the other games that are going on. I don't need you to throw socks at my face that say NCAA on them. I don't need NCAA all the athlete socks like just pay the athlete save the money on the socks and have me watch the games on the jumbotron it's not that hard the socks are made in i don't need it the socks are made in some type of sweatshop in china like yeah, they're I don't not need them. There, it's they're not, not coming from the indianapolis headquarters uh, themselves uh the mascot dance-offs were fine no they weren't I the clemson say, tiger deserved better i'm just saying uh, lost to baylor in the second round destroyed new mexico in the first round but just give me the games. You've got just enough. You, you've got enough stoppages to keep the games up. Exactly. Like there are so many damn stoppages. Like we don't need. You said all stoppages, of that. and I forgot. My other thing: we need less stoppages. And can we get six fouls in college basketball? Can we get six fouls, or at the very least, when we go to overtime, you get one back? I don't know. Because you cannot have this many no foul outs changing outcomes of the game. Houston and Texas A&M is, is a an different anomaly. thing. That's an anomaly. That's a different anomaly. thing. I'm not saying <laughs> foul, that, although. Foul those dudes out because you didn't call enough fouls on any of them. Somehow, you they could have had 100 fouls and it wouldn't have mattered. It would not have been but enough. But there were multiple games throughout the yeah. weekend. Even on the women's side, that yeah. LSU Middle Tennessee game, uh, I had the same thought. Like, just go up to six. We do it in the NBA. I do, I, we are here to watch the stars play. Can you yes. name another sport that willingly disqualifies no. its stars? For, for ticky-tack stuff, right? Like, if you get the fighting in a game, yeah, sure, you'll be tossed. But baseball's not up. Oh, you threw too many balls. You got to go. All right? Up. Oh, you made an error. You're tossed from the game. Football's Football. not like, up. Oh, you, you fall started twice. Right. Get you're him done. out of here. You're done. No other sport willingly, willingly disqualifies their players. And I understand that there's a strategy component to it. So, fine. Keep the strategy component. Say, hey, we do it with the, the team. We got team fouls. Do individual foul penalties. Hey, once you hit more than X amount of fouls, mm -hmm. every foul you have from that point on, two shots and loss and, and, and the, the ball. ball. One shot and the ball. Treat it like a tech. So do, do that. And then, boom, you get past that. So let's say six fouls. Boom, you get past six fouls, two shots in the ball. Or two shots. You get past ten fouls. All right. Once two shots and, and the, the team ball. gets the ball. Sure. And do it like that. But I, my God, we can't be disqualifying these players. My biggest fear in every single college basketball game that I watch is somebody gets in foul trouble and they're out of the game. Somebody important gets in mm -hmm. foul trouble, they're out of the game, and it's it's a less enjoyable product. Yeah. Don Connect could do it. Edie could do it. Uh, uh, Shed could could do. Shed very well should have done it. He he could do it. Sharp could do it. Like it's there are stars who we are here. To see, they could all end up with two quick fouls right. and then be out of the game until the second half. Yeah. I mean, even in the Texas A&M game yesterday, like, Obaseki was the, for me, standout player that I, I was not familiar so with good. your game, sir. So good. He had that one dunk yesterday. Where oh, I was like, yeah. So he had Ball. the highlight of the, high, outside of the buzzer Houston, beater, of Houston course. just let him go straight, straight to the rim. Straight Nobody to the rim. Nobody stopped him. Come on Nobody now. in front of him. But yeah, he was in, However, he was, he was in foul trouble the whole game. So he's on the, that changes the, and I get, like, the competitive piece of it, fine. But please stop taking the best players out of these very important games or find some workaround where you either get six fouls, you either get a foul back if it goes into overtime so that you're not sitting here thinking, what's my dude's name who had to hit the free throws for Houston? I've already forgotten him. As well, you gone, should. Gone too soon. No, I'm giving him the respect <laughs> that he Elvin, deserves. Elvin. Elvin hit one free throw, and we're going to talk about him again? Can we talk about the one semi-smaller... White basketball player, Elvin. Why were we talking I about I thought Elvin? of it like an elf. Elfin? I was like, Elfin? <laughs> you an Elfin? <laughs> anyway, the whole reason we...
we got on a tangent, as we tend to do on this here lovely little show. I was going to say, with the women's games, one of the craziest moments last night was that the Baylor-Virginia Tech women's game was on the Jumbotron, and it was an incredible game. Jada Walker went off for Baylor, 28 points. She was playing in Pittsburgh, which is her hometown. That's where the second-round games were. And, or I'm sorry, in Virginia Tech wherever that is in Virginia. And they have the game on <laughs> and it's the end of the game. And Virginia Tech has Roanoke. Isn't it Roanoke? Sounds about right. Is it Blacksburg? Uh, maybe Blacksburg. I think it's Blacksburg. I think it's Blacksburg. It's not Roanoke. You have all this information about random ass Grand Canyon University. It's but, hard but to have Tech, space for Grand Canyon. One of the great <laughs> programs in okay, this don't, nation. Okay, doesn't this happen to you every now and then though, where you say like, where's school X, Y, and Z, and you're like, oh, it's in Virginia Tech, Virginia. That happened with Texas A&M. Chris was like, where's Texas A&M again? I was like, oh, it's in Texas A&M. Where's Texas Tech University? Oh, it's no, in Texas Jessica, Tech. Jessica. It's in College Station in Texas Tech's in Lubbock. No. I know where they actually are, but sometimes when your brain is no. just going rapid fire. No, I've never said it's Anyway, in. Virginia Tech girl releases the three. Game tying three. Ball leaves her hand. It's on the Jumbotron. Everyone's invested. Women's basketball, let's go. That's back to Houston, Texas A&M coming out of the half. Uh, the groans that you heard. And there were still some Baylor fans in there because Baylor had played in the last game. And just, oh, come on. And then they ended up going back to it and it was too late and Baylor wins the game. But again, these are the little decisions that you make when you put a game on the Jumbotron. If it's in a important game deciding moment. Just leave it up there for a second. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. I promise. I'm going to be honest. There are enough screens on that court to where we should always have another game going as well. At least one. Yes. It's it's So the Jumbotron, one, two sides. Is it three and four? And then up underneath, you've got TVs up underneath the Jumbotron. And then you've just got big old screens, four big screens in the four corners. Pick one of those corners. Pick two of those corners on opposite sides of the court. And just have different games streaming up there. Yeah. Let's go. I don't. I don't care. What Jalen? You don't do anything. What anyways. did he say? He's complaining about work. Why? Because it's, it's more work. Oh, to put to put the games up. Do it for the people. Do it for the people. Do it for the basketball fans. Do it for the basketball. Who suffer fans. through the good games? Don't suffer through. Are rewarded with the good games. Suffer through the bad games. If you're in the middle of a bad game especially, please give us a double screen. Just give us the double box. Give us a quad box. I know that's crazy. I love four I know boxes. that's crazy, but I'm I do love a four box. boxes. I love boxes. All right, let's take a quick break. Grizzlies Nuggets tonight in Denver. We'll talk about that a little bit along with the Grizzlies win over the Spurs this weekend. Plus, see CJ and I hit the streets asking people a very simple question. Could they name a college basketball player? You don't want to miss it because CJ falls down and embarrasses himself. That's my cell. You'll see it on the other side. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Did I invent this? Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex-producer, Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She Didn't decides she, she, wants to, she wants to dabble in country, in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter. When she's doing her next concert, and right. she says, hey, my new album's about to come out, uh, inspired, Cowboy Carter. Inspired I just, by the Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's talk about some of the guys who get dunked on the most. Mel Turpin. There's a great clip on YouTube, kids. Go look this up, where Michael Jordan gets the ball in the post, spins around John Stockton and dunks. As he runs down the court, a fan in Utah says, hey, pick on someone your own size. The next time down, Michael Jordan comes down, seven foot tall Mel Turpin's under the basket, and Jordan just hammers on him. And as he runs down the court, he turns to the fan and says, was he big enough? IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're recruiting the best talent to help us develop the sustainable steel needed for today and tomorrow. 
Join us at the edge of the future. Visit www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. Chugga, 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 the Hot Mess Express. Chugga, 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 chugga. Sir, sir, can sir, I ask you a sir, question? Can question, I ask you a question, question really fast? Quick cool question. Oh, no, yeah, no, just real quick. Can easy, you easy. name a college basketball player? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Clemson, go to the Clemson fans. They know stuff. They, y'all are smart. Can any of you name a college basketball player? PJ Hall. PJ Hall. PJ Hall. All right, you're oh, nice people. We'll give oh. it to you. Can right. you name a college basketball player? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Nobody knows basketball players. Y'all know basketball players. Oh, 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 oh. Can you name a college basketball player? Tony Proctor. Better oh. question. Duke and North Carolina? Yeah, yeah what is you? Yeah, yeah. Are y'all from North Carolina? No, no. Oh my god. Is this good parenting or bad parenting? I don't you know. Player. Can you name a college basketball player? Yeah, uh, PJ Hall. So many PJ Hall oh, fans. Do you not know any women? <laughs> Juju Watkins. Juju! Redemption. Redemption. Oh, I'm going to throw up. Zach Eady. So boring. <laughs> sir, come here, let me sir, ask you. Sir, sir. Can you name a college basketball player? Oh my god! Who? RJ, RJ. RJ. He graduated. Yo, wait, 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 wait. A and M and Baylor. Yeah, we, got, we got degrees in our family from both schools. So, so you're a genius. Name a college basketball player. Wade Taylor the fourth. Wade Taylor the fourth, sir. Well woo. done. Well done. Hello, how are you today? Good, how are you? Can you name a college basketball player? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm just here for the fun. I'll help you. Help me, help me. Juju Watkins. Juju Watkins. Yes, another Juju Watkins fan. They're everywhere. Pac-12, Pac-12. Pac-12. How does it feel to represent the greatest conference to ever die? Man, I love it. It, it died. It's just gone. Can you name a basketball player in the back in the Pac-12? Don't tell me. Don't, Easy. Don't me name one. Juju the star. Juju the star. Juju Y'all like Baylor in yeah. Houston gear? Yeah, we love Baylor in Houston. Name me a Big 12 basketball player. Well, on your team? No, just a big any Big 12 basketball player. Jamal Shedd, Ray J. Dennis, uh, y'all got Walter, y'all got- We get it, you like the Cougar. Ah! Name one basketball player. Angel Reese. Angel, Angel Reese. Reese. Angel Reese. Angel Reese, there we go. That on Women's History Month. Okay, to, a couple clarifications. The guy I said, how does it feel to root for the greatest conference to ever die? His friend was the guy in the Pac-12 shirt. I saw a random Pac-12 shirt just wandering its way, lost in the Memphis desert yesterday, and I got so <laughs> excited about it. The one that we didn't include that makes me mad, somebody said Caitlin Clark, but couldn't come up with Clark's last name. He's like, Caitlin something or other, and you were like, something or other. <laughs> anyway, good work. We'll find that. Ricky good teamwork. I'm okay, everybody. Thank you, guys. You guys are real concerned about me in the chat. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm okay. I did come and help you out. Yes, we didn't show that. I, I, we didn't I show feel like that. I got made to look. We didn't show that. Like a real bad teammate there. Well, but I did eventually come and offer you a hand. When your teammate falls, you you kind of got to keep playing. We don't stop playing because the teammate it's is true. there. We got I needed to keep a, playing. a pause. I needed stop it. Yeah, more stoppage time. We stop <laughs> more time. stoppage time in that the was, action. That was the slowest fall i've ever seen also forget yeah, yeah, slow yeah. motion like I, I went down real slow and unathletic like yeah, you did it was also a really good example of uh, my quickness my lateral movement abilities post achilles which is a perfect segue into some grizzlies news because as you watched me run around the plaza showing what achilles surgery and proper rehabilitation can do for a person brandon clark looks like he is close 
at least closer to a return for the Grizzlies. This is their injury report for tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets. You see Brandon Clark under doubtful. That is the first time he has been out of the out category since he tore his Achilles. Obviously, we read the tea leaves with the Grizzlies in the injury report way of life. Doubtful means he likely will not play in Denver tonight, although it would have been cool if he made his return in Denver after he tore his Achilles in that altitude at Ball Arena against the Nuggets last year. But doubtful usually leads to questionable and questionable leads to being back on the court. So could we see Brandon Clark against the Lakers when the Grizzlies return home on Wednesday? Perhaps. And that would be a very fun and exciting thing for Memphis. Awesome for Brandon Clark, who has worked his butt off to come back from an Achilles tear. It is one of the worst injuries in sports. And for Brandon Clark, someone who is so bouncy and so much of his game revolves around his abilities to jump and get off the floor, uh, the fact that he can come back and is in line to come back for the Grizzlies this season, just a little over a year since he tore his Achilles, is remarkable work. So would love to see that. Love to see Jaron Jackson Jr. with a game winner over the weekend in a game between the Grizzlies and the Spurs, which had big tank vibes, big tank vibes. But this was the final play for Jaron Jackson Jr. He was the best player on the court. Watch him work, watch him shoot and Grizzlies win. Grizzlies had allowed like six points in 20 seconds to the Spurs. And if you do watch that play, I know Jaron gets the game winner. He gets the credit. It's cool. My favorite part of that, Lang Whitaker pointed that out on Twitter, is Scottie Pippen Jr. just straight up getting in the way of Victor Webanyama. Just like, get out of here! Not allowing Victor Webanyama to have any opportunity to block that Jaron shot because Wemby had a huge game. He blocked, I believe it was Gigi Jackson, where Wemby had a block on one end and then a dunk on the other. The block felt like it sent someone into like the seventh circle of hell. Like the force at which Victor Webanyama can come down on someone, because talk about not just being height, it is the force of his blocks. Whoever it was just crumbled. I saw the highlight in passing. because let's be, I was here at the games on Friday night. And so just trying to keep up with both of them. And that came across my timeline. And I was like, oh, hope that person's OK. And I do think it was Gigi. But alas, Grizzlies got a win. Woo! Now they play the Nuggets tonight. Aww. So Edie and Wimby on different teams. Sure. Can Edie do anything with that? It's a great question. <laughs> Can Edie do anything with Jaren? Can Edie do anything with who's a, who's the best pick and roll big right now? Would would you just Jokic. say I'm putting you on the spot? Can Edie Jokic do anything with, with Jokic? Gafford. 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 There we go. That's a pick and roll big. Can Can Edie do anything with he's that? A good re- he's a very good rebounder. Okay. Something the. Okay. Grizzlies would like. I just, I just wonder what he does. I'm not sure. I he watch, does not. I watch Shed and say sure. that should have a place in this. League. I watch Klingon for UConn yeah. and I say that does have a place in the this shooter, league. the one you can't leave. The block, no, the big guy. Oh, the big guy. The yeah, big yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. The big guy who is in the cast of potential right. draft night possibilities for the Memphis Grizzlies. He's good. He had eight blocks, eight blocks against Northwestern. Edie is finding his point. He's good, and it's not just because he is tall, but God, Victor Webanyama is insane. Anyway, Nuggets have a uh, Jokic and Murray are both questionable for tonight's game. They didn't play in the Nuggets game against the Trailblazers the other night, and the Nuggets still won. Michael Porter Jr. has been on a tear post All Star break. He went to Cabo, and apparently Cabo cured all of his shooting woes that he was having earlier in the season. He had 31 the other night against Portland. Uh, he's been so solid. This Nuggets team is. We've talked about it excessively. So good. And in very good position to go out there and attempt to repeat. Michael Porter Jr. is having the start to a career that I thought Tobias Harris was going to have in Philly. When it was he, Embiid, and Ben Simmons. It was like, okay, this guy is third, but he's actually on most teams a a second option. And Tobias Harris kind of let me down in every single possible way imaginable. And I'm glad that Michael Porter Jr. isn't. Like yeah. Michael Porter Jr. on most teams is your second option. On that team, he's your third option. And he's just able to feed off of Murray and Jokic's ability to create in a way that really benefits him and his game. Yeah. Grizzlies Nuggets tonight, 8 p.m. on Bally Sports South East. It'll be up against some epic women's basketball games on the other side. We'll be going back and forth, keeping that remote on lock. All right, let's do a little Hot Mess Express. It was funny, CJ, while we were doing our 
JB and CJ on the street running around the plaza accosting just normal nice basketball fans trying to, you know, come watch their teams play. One man who didn't make our video, who one, stole my keys or tried to steal my keys after they fell out of my pocket. He'd had a couple beverages. And I don't know if you heard what he said as I was trying to get my keys back. I, did, I was I was sneaking around. I know, I you were trying I to thought, help me out. You're, I thought we were going to have to sneak there. You were covering the back. I was, I, was, I was a little worried. I was ready to sneak him. I was a little worried, but he said with slurred words, what do you get out of being an influencer? I said, sir, I'm not an influencer. I'm just a humble employee of the Memphis Grizzlies. <laughs> he said, no, but you're trying to trying to influence with it. What is this? I said, we're just having fun. And my coworker here is falling on his behind and we're just doing this. But when it comes to like influencer and social media esque things, I had an all timer this weekend, CJ, and I do need to address it because people have asked. I did keep my tweet that at one point was dubbed the tweet of the year on the UK, UK, Kate Middleton, John Calipari comparison. Rich Eisen himself had quote tweeted it, calling it incredible or some variation of those words. Rich Eisen has since deleted his quote tweet as many celebrities deleted their quote tweets of my great tweet, as many deleted their responses to my tweet after the news. I am sitting there, I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty cool to go viral, okay? Your phone is blowing up. And at that point, it was Friday morning. We had finished our GCM Mega Madness show. I went over to watch Baylor Colgate and I sat down and I'm just, I'm on my phone scrolling. Um, ooh, the hits, ooh. Best tweet of the year, tweet of the year, hands down. This is the funniest thing I've seen on this internet. This is why I stay on Twitter and it's all, it's all, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> then. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> a video pops up on my feed, and it is Princess Catherine, and I will use her full name, Catherine Princess of Wales. And she announced that she has cancer. And it was a very serious video announcement. They cut into March Madness. CBS cut into March Madness. I thought we fought a war for this. I thought all the tea was dumped in the harbor for this. But alas, this is global news. Why do they hate America? Why do they hate our basketball tournament? What are we doing? I didn't know they cut know. into basketball yes. for this announcement. They cut into the game. She, oh, she's just a celebrity. If that, she even over a, here, what is she? She means nothing to us over here. She is a public figure in a high position, which, okay. Where? Please, one sec, because I want to be perfectly clear. Cancer sucks. And I wish anybody going through cancer, because when I kept that tweet up, I had a lot of people who were like, I hope you get cancer someday and see, and I'm like, okay, that's a step too far. All right. It was a joke that fit in the moment. It wasn't trying to be distasteful. I obviously did not know. None of us knew. And if I can say a small piece of that tweet, that was the bridge too far for the Royal family. They saw Kate Middleton get compared to John Calipari and they said, enough. Can't, we can't have we this. We cannot have this. This man hasn't We're been to a final four in how many years? <laughs> Too many. We're going to cut into your little basketball tournament and we are going to nip this in the bud right here. Uh, I hope that she is able to get well. I hope she's on the way to recovery, able to undergo chemotherapy, as she said in the video right now. It has to have been hell to be Kate Middleton for the last couple of weeks. One, because you are undergoing cancer and two, because of the excess stresses of everything that has been around that story. So I want to be perfectly clear, like Kate Middleton, we're rooting for you. I hope the support is there, uh, both familial, friend. There are a lot of people out there uh, rooting for her and sending love and thoughts and prayers. So period on that. But, or we'll put it in and, she was in that position because of everyone around her. The fact that the royal family allowed that to spiral in the way that it did with the edited pictures, pictures, the video footage of her walking, her walking around that we still don't know, why she's even making that video without her husband by her side is something that makes absolutely zero sense to me. The future king of England, where is he? We've been saying, where is Kate all this time? Okay, maybe we need to change direction. Quick pivot. Where's Will? Yum. William. I don't know. But it is one of the mo most royally bumbled PR jobs of all time. And if they had simply come out in the very beginning and said, hey, Princess Catherine undergoing surgery, found a complication along the way. She is starting treatment for cancer. Please wish her the best. None of this would have taken off in the way that it did. Or just don't do the picture. Fine. Yeah, all of the don't, above. Don't, don't do the picture. 
don't do the clearly photoshop picture and then once you do the clearly photoshop picture like hey just so everybody knows we apologize for the picture dealing with some health stuff over here on this side we ask you to please forgive our our, mis, our mishap on the picture and give us some some privacy while we deal with this thing everybody is alive and well we're just dealing with some health stuff the weird soft launch of the rose lady who according to reports is considering a defamation suit against stephen colbert really because he did his whole bit without oh. permission we're asking permission from the royal family? What is this? And what is she? Again, <laughs> these people don't matter over here. So you don't. Give me the camera. Brits, we don't give a damn about your royals. Y'all don't matter over here. Y'all are Our taxpayer dollars we are wasted elsewhere. This. Not on you. We fought over this very thing. We're going to make fun of you guys. And they don't do a whole lot of things over there either. It's not like they make major decisions, correct me if I'm wrong. So yes, we're going to make fun of you people. We are. We're going to make fun of your royals. We are. All right? That's that. right? They're just celebrities at this point. They're celebrities who don't sing, don't dance, don't act. They, they, they don't, don't play go, basketball. They don't play any type of ball. We're going to make fun of them because they're celebrities. Good Lord, what are y'all talking about? And this Kate, is, this is wish, your reminder. Wish everybody who has cancer, Kate go. included, <laughs> wish them the best speedy recovery. Cancer sucks. Cancer, like all diseases, doesn't give a damn about race, religion, social status, royalty. creed, royalty. It comes to get people from time to time. It is alarming that Kate is falling prey to a trend recently of spikes in cancers amongst younger people. Young women. And young Oof. women, especially, particularly in this particular case. Uh, yeah, that, that all sucks. Wish her nothing but the best. But these jokes are going to fly. They, they just are. So yes. get, get over yourselves, you pompous asshole. <laughs> this is your reminder that public figures in high positions have great privilege and sometimes lose a semblance of privacy. It comes with the gig. Speaking of college basketball coaches, sometimes we just need to know less. Sometimes we just don't need to know everything you do. And that was certainly the case with Dan Hurley this weekend because it was reminded that he is a total weirdo. He is the king of superstitions. They did this whole bit about Dan Hurley during the UConn Northwestern game yesterday where we were reminded that he eats eight M&Ms, not seven, not nine, but eight M&Ms before every game. He drinks the same kind of coffee on the sidelines, first of all. Any coach who's drinking coffee while coaching a basketball game is just wild man behavior. Like, you're I mean, going to get the shakes, my dude. I drink too much coffee. I know how this goes. Is that worse than Ed Orgeron, who's drinking a 12-pack of, of energy drinks a day? Yes. Is it worse than John Roser hitting that? John Roser, whatever by the way, it's called. Who, who left the daggum energy drink in here yeah. from Friday. We all have our vices, but I cannot imagine with the stress How and like the high How much caffeine is in a bulletproof coffee, by the way? I don't know. All right, I'm going to look at that. Thanks. Look that up because then I'll get to the weirdest part. Um, he dresses head to toe in the same exact clothing from last year's NCAA tournament run, and we learned in the broadcast that that also means underwear. He is wearing the same undies that he wears every game, and his wife travels with a portable laundry machine so that they can wash the underwear so that it is ready to be worn in the next game. And I will say, I'm grateful that they have the portable washing machine, so at least the underwear is clean. Also, specifically, they are Red Dragon underwear, in case anyone was wondering what kind of underwear Dan Hurley is wearing while coaching UConn and trying to be the first team to go back to back since Florida did it in the mid 2000s. I know too much. This is a classic example. I don't need to know that much about someone. Dan Hurley, the new Cisco, trying to unleash the dragon. Um, the weird thing about this is that he washes these things because that washes away the luck. If you're going to wear the same pair of draws to every game and since the, the last year's tournament win, uh, last year's championship win, if that's what you're going to do, then they've got to be funky. They've got to smell like last year. You can't be washing them, otherwise you're washing away the luck. Go ahead and unleash that dragon, but like... You got it's got to be stank down there. Allen Iverson 
would well, do things like this. Other athletes have done things like this where they wear the same. Patrick Mahomes recently. We talked about Patrick yeah. Mahomes doing this. Yeah. Baseball players is baseball season. Um, the start of baseball we season. We can see their when underwear. They, well, can we still? No. Okay. They I got haven't rid seen of the it knuckle. in a minute. I don't know. We'll find out. I can't. I hope we can still see the moose knuckle. I know ladies like that. Um, it's baseball growing players. The game, CJ. <laughs> a lot of stuff is growing. Um, baseball players will get on a hot streak and just keep wearing the same things. They don't wash it. You can't wash it because you're washing away the luck. Right. It's how it works, obviously. Also, I was unaware that bulletproof coffee is coffee with butter in it. So, doesn't he have to use the bathroom? He's going to have a Paul Pierce moment. In those underwear? <laughs> and then they're going to have to wash them immediately. Well, you can't wash them because, again, sorry. you're getting rid of the luck. Coffee with butter in it makes me, like preemptively need to go to the bathroom like just talking about it i feel uncomfortable in this moment ew what what a bizarre way to start your day it is intended to fuel start your day by replacing a carb heavy breakfast just take your caffeine and your butter mix it all together you're set. on an empty tummy i don't know if he has an empty oh, tummy wow. i don't know he's a madman all right we made it through the first uh, weekend of the tournament which means we absolutely know all of the words to every commercial that we've seen if i see the buffalo wild wing buffalo with wings coming into my buffalo wild oh, wings I i'm gonna that. lose I need that my mind to I need okay that. I need but that i would keep leave. that one i would keep that one if it meant that we could get rid of the SGA, Chet Holmgren, What a Pro Wants commercial. Oh, oh, that's a great what commercial. A pro wants. Why are you what mad pro... about that commercial? Because that's a banger it's horrendous. of a commercial. Shout out Mike McClure with the billion dollar idea, a premium stream where users can pay to not see the What a Pro Wants commercial with Holmgren and SGA. I don't need this anymore. We used to have great March Madness commercials. I don't know what's happened. We used to have Scoop There It Is. We used to have, do you remember? Do you remember? Orange vanilla soft drink that we don't talk because we are a proud Pepsi show. I do. Orange vanilla. You remember. Those were the days. Those were the days. How about the old road trip commercials with Charles Barkley I, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson? Those were good. And every every year I say this, and I want to say it one more time. Samuel L. Jackson, Charles Barkley, Spike Lee. I need that buddy yeah. movie. Yeah. I need that movie from them driving from one part of the country to the other part of the I country. I don't need the SGA Chet Holmgren I boy need band. That. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait. I don't need it. That's a great commercial. No, I can't not. believe that's the commercial it's you're so mad bad. about. That damn Buffalo knocking people through windows talking about box out. That's annoying. That Buffalo is is by far of yeah. my lifetime the most annoying uh, spokesman for a product. Uh -huh. The, what a what a what a pro wants what a pro needs awful. is a banger. No, They're it was a, a it was great. It uh, made Christina me Aguilera laugh song. the first time I heard it. I love it, and I've hated it ever since. Hated it ever since. I will say, let's pour one out collectively, fans of the JBSWCJH for the NCAA tournament commercial. Gone, but never forgotten. They played Can it I? on the Jumbotron, and Chris turned to me, and he said, I will not listen to this commercial again. <laughs> can I, can I, we love our sponsors. We do. But that commercial was, oh, boy. It was. Oh, oh. Not Jaylen the best is, of all time. Like, oh, oh, my gosh. So glad it's gone. All right, quick hitters. Did you see the kid eating a ridiculous amount of cotton candy during no, the I Baylor Clemson no, game? Oh, my God. They kept going back to this kid. And obviously, we were at the game, so I'm just seeing this come through my timeline. And I just kept showing him. He was eating every colored cotton candy that you could ever think. I need to know if he slept at all last night. It was a, like, parenting lesson despite not having children yet. I just thought to myself, that will never be my kid. But then I also understand you're just trying to keep your kid interested. Sometimes people come to basketball games. They can't get into all of it. I watched a woman play Candy Crush for the entirety of the Houston Texas well, A&M game. Could, it happens to the you best You could get us. into it if there weren't so many stoppages. I found myself playing on my phone mm -hmm. because it's like, yo, we just had a timeout. Why are we stop? Oh, under 12 minute mark. Stop the damn game. Okay, thank you for that because Chris was like, look at our country. What a sad state of society. We're all just on our phones. I'm like, what else are we supposed to do? They won't show us the games. Again, I don't need the sock toss. But the kitty in cotton candy was pretty cute. He was one of the best performers of the weekend 
at FedEx Forum. Uh, also, shout out to the Yale Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry account, which is Yale MBB on Twitter. So one might think Yale men's basketball would be Yale MBB. No, it's Yale M basketball. Um, their notifications were blowing up all weekend, but they made the record clear. Bula Bula. Yale got destroyed by San Diego State yesterday. But I did appreciate them being a part of the equation that made Greg Sankey look kind of silly after all of his comments about automatic qualifiers and then his team's loss to Yale and Oakland. Shout out the smart people at Yale. Molecular. And the smart people at Oakland? And the smart people at Oakland. Well, I was just saying from the, because it's the Yale Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry account. I can't even say it without looking at the specificities of the word. And I'm always reminded during March Madness, these kids aren't on athletic scholarships, which is why. How we never got athletic scholarships at Ivy's is beyond. Well, you know, every everybody doesn't want to be a part of this money-making machine that is NCAA in, in every imaginable way. The Ivy League show you a pathway, an example of how, hey, we can be in the NCAA, we can compete at this level, and we just won't take any of the, the money. And so if we're not going to take any of the money, we're not going to be able to have the scholarship. So for those of you who want to complain, cough, cough, Nick Saban, go do what the Ivy Leagues do. Get out of my damn feed. Stop talking to me about the game. And now the love. Ivies are unionizing. Yeah. The Dartmouth men's basketball so, team could be the big one there. There was a great shot over the weekend. We didn't even get to talk about this. Oh, my gosh. It was Saturday. It was incredible. Oh, I it hate was, you. you hate me. I hate you. You hate me. I hate you. Look at this shot right here. I Look used the, to be a oh. shooter. No. No, no do don't it again. Keep going. Show it again. Oh, good. You only have the one where I took one, not Yo, where I missed like go. 12 in a row. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. Just a little left. It was the wind. That, it was is that the wind. What kind of shot is that? <laughs> have you ever shot that shot? <laughs> do you work on that shot? Wait. <laughs> The worst part is I did it at the end. I missed everyone. That was my first time shooting a basketball like that post Achilles. I'm throwing every excuse at the book. Patrick, you and Nick tell. You've never practiced this, that shot post Achilles. I used to be a shooter. I, so I need to have oh, like, wait, my wait, parents wait, come out. on this show. Time out. You used to be a shooter from where? Three. NBA three? Because wasn't that NBA three? Yeah, but like I okay. As a young girl who put spoiler, yes. Most girls practice NBA threes at some point in time because you don't want someone to one day say, "Oh, you can only shoot from the women's line." So you just shoot from wherever. But in games, yes, and in high pressure situations, sure. And that okay. was and the wind. I the Even wind. greatest shooter in Memphis women's basketball history, Madison Griggs, struggled a bit with the wind. Did she also make like eight threes along the way? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's cool. And the wind. In the wind. Mm. Even the mayor made one. <laughs> one. One. And y'all are talking no, about signing don't, up to attend that. Do one. not blow Paul one. Young's spot. I respect the hell out of Paul Young. Came to that event. He was there all afternoon with the kids. It was great to see. And he fumbled a little his first time through and he came back. He wanted. So wait, revenge. wait, wait. Wait, he did it twice? He did it twice did and it made twice. one. Stop if it. If I had done it twice, I would have made one. Stop it. If I did it they twice, let all I, the wouldn't pros it. Do I wouldn't have made it. They let Rudy, T.A., Mario Chalmers all do it. Do it twice? Yeah. Okay. Well, that seems kind so of cheating to me. So I should have been able to do it twice. <laughs> Just hit something. Did you hit anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, all the other. I'll send you the video. If you okay. had shown, they were all close. Were Outside they? of those two. Those two were not close. I had scaries in my tummy. <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> Grizz gave me the ball and said, here. And I said, oh, God. Scary's in your tummy. Scary's in you're my tummy. You're not built for March. No. You should have seen me watching you're, the Houston, Texas A&M not, game. I'm like doubled over myself. I don't care about them. What's my man's name? I've forgotten it already. Jack? Oh, the, oh, From um, Houston. Elvin. <laughs> Elvin. You're not, you're no Elvin, What's damn his it. first name? Is it not Elvin? No, it's not Elvin, <laughs> Elvin. It's Ryan. It's Ryan Elvin. <laughs> We will always remember Ryan Elvin wait, on, and his wait, gumbo wait. or it, his whatever boil. Is it Elvis or Elvin? Elvin. Right. E-L-V-I-N. In I've the already, city of Elvis. I already forgot his name. Made one free throw. 
if you want to spend five hopes, minutes talking about Elvis. And Houston hopes he never touches the court again this tournament unless they are up 25 in a national championship game and he gets to come in for his glory moment. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Big thanks to everyone. Go ahead, hit that like button. If you were watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to Grind City Media. Gary Parrish was up until 5 o'clock this morning, so he did not join us on today's show. He's going to join us on Wednesday, which will help us get all primed and prepped for Sweet no. 16 Elite Eight action. Tuesday. He's, joining Tuesday. He's joining us tomorrow. He's joining us tomorrow. Oh, I wonder why I got a little mixed up. I sent the clarification to you. I wonder why I got a little I confused. The clarif- yeah, I've but my brain's text. working in rapid fire. Yeah, but first. Yeah, first I did the wrong <laughs> thing, and then I cleaned it up. You did, and then I messed it up again. Oh, That's Lord. showbiz, baby. Grizzlies Nuggets tonight uh, in Denver. That's on at 8. We'll be back tomorrow. I think Mike Wallace will join us. We can talk about Brandon Clark's pending return. I don't know. I don't know. And hopefully uh, some good women's games as well tonight. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Do you have the women's games pulled up over there? I sure do. What Give would you winners. like from it? Give me your winners. All of them? Yes. It's only like, what, eight games, four games? How many games are there tonight? Eight. Yeah. Give me Iowa, UCLA, USC, Oklahoma, Syracuse upsets UConn. Ooh. And Utah upsets Gonzaga.